Hi, brothers and sisters, family in the Lord. I welcome you to this broadcast. And I am so blessed today to just share something with you, which is really precious. And when you enter into this place that we want to talk about, I can guarantee you that your life will change completely, completely and dramatically. So let's pray before we start. Father, we just give you the praise and the glory that you are the light and the glory of our hearts, Lord. I praise you that you shine your light on our hearts, on our understanding, through the spirit of wisdom and revelation, Lord, that we will come to a deeper knowledge of your word, the living word, and that your grace will be upon us. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. Yes. I really believe that this is a, a word that will transform. So I was reading in my Afrikaans Bible, for those of you who don't know, I come from South Africa, and um, the scripture uh, translations are all different, but it all speaks of the same thing, and it's when you start Pondering upon a scripture, when when he enlightens a scripture to your heart and you start meditating on it, he says, meditate on my word day and night and you will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water and you will bear the fruit of it. And I heard something very beautiful today. Um, somebody that said, uh, I don't care how much of the word you have memorized, but I am inspired by how much of the word you have become. So the word changes us. It transforms our lifestyle when we start pondering on it, when we start meditating on it. It opens up our understanding so that we can come into deeper knowledge of the depths of Christ. And it is so glorious. I know that I will probably have some more revelation on this the more I meditate on it, the more I receive the nutrients of that living bread that he breaks for you while you are meditating because you're meditating in the spirit. It's not the mind reasoning or the, the, the intellect that opens up the word for you. It is the spirit. He says, my word is spirit and it is life. So when he quickens his word to you and the spirit breathes on that scripture, I have never seen that scripture before. I'm sure I have never read it. If I did, it was not quickened to me. So I didn't want to remember it. And that's in um, Proverbs 14, verse 30. And it's amazing how things come together and fit together like puzzle pieces. So I want to read that in different translations to you so that you can just start that I could say, unraveling of his glory in you through the word. So uh, Proverbs 14, 30 says, A heart at peace gives life to the body, but envy rots the bones. In New Living Translation, a peaceful heart leads to a healthy body. Jealousy is like cancer in the bones. A tranquil heart gives life to the flesh, but envy makes the bones rot. So we have here different words. And then there's another one. A sound heart is the life of the flesh. That's the King James 2000. But envy, the rottenness of the bones. 
sound heart. What is something which is sound? It is, I looked up the word marpei, is the word in Hebrew for a, a, that word, sound heart, a peaceful heart. Now, my translation in Afrikaans was a heart at rest. And I really like that one the most. That's the one that spoke to me. A heart at rest is life to your flesh. Is that glorious? Is that something that we all want and that we all need? A heart at rest. And I started looking at my own heart. Is my heart at rest? So we all have stuff going on in our lives, difficulties, challenges, whatever you want to call it. How do I come to a place of having a heart of rest? He says, um, it's John 14, 27. He says, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. Let not your heart be troubled. So many of us have so many things. The people that I minister to, they all have this issue and that issue which troubles the heart. If I become aware of it, that a peaceful heart, a restful heart, a heart that's at rest, is actually a heart that is trusting God. It's when we have surrendered that issue whatever it is and some people have great difficulties but the problem is that we think we can change it we cannot whatever the issue is we do not have the ability to change that situation but there is God in heaven, who lives in our hearts. And if we give him that place where he rules and reigns. So I want to connect this with the, the gift of rest. He says um, in um, Hebrews 4, he talks about um, verse 9 to 11. Let me read that. There remains, therefore, a rest to the people of God. For he that entered into his rest, he has also seized from his own works as God did from his. So that, what does it mean? It means hands off. It means let go and let God. Let God. So why do we still want to hand, have a hand on the issue? Because our mind is not at rest. Why is the mind not at rest? Because we haven't given it to the Lord. He says, those who are weary and heavy laden, come to me and I will give you rest. Rest is a place where I'm yoked with the Lord, according to Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 and 30. And that yoke of the Lord is simply to do his will, to want his will. But I have to surrender. You see, when I'm yoked with the Lord, I can't do my own thing. I can't do my own will. I go where he goes. And whatever is coming my way is under his control and I want to give you a secret here I think maybe I've mentioned it before that the laboring that he's talking about in Hebrews um, 4 verse 9 he says labor to enter into my rest verse 11 that labor actually means surrender labor to surrender Lord, I just give you everything. I cannot change the situation. I cannot, by worry, add one cubit to my length or my width. And I have experienced this very um, vividly many years ago when I came to the States and I was in dire financial need and under stress to pay my rent 
and all that. And I was worrying that I was in a tight nervous ball. And the Lord said to me, don't I care for the, the, the lilies in the field? Don't I take care of the birds? And aren't you much more worse than they? And then when he came to the verse that you cannot add anything to your length or width by worrying, it dawned on me that this is a futile <clears throat> operation to worry. It's futile because it doesn't change a thing. It just changes my poor nervous system into a state where I can't think straight. I can't hear the voice of God. So what did he say? Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Believe. So what does it say when I worry and I stress? It simply says I don't believe. I don't trust. And in that place, many years ago, 24 years ago, I realized this worry is actually a sin. And I said, Father, forgive me, but I am handing over my finances to you. And it might be your finances, it might be your house, it might be your relationships, whatever the issue is. But let it go. Let go the mulling around back and forth over the same old thing. It's not going to change it. But when I put my trust in God and I say, Lord, you're the only one and you are faithful. You are faithful when I call on you. Isaiah City talks about it. It says in, in quietness, um, let me find that scripture, Isaiah 30. The, he was talking about how he was waiting for the people to come to him. But no, they wanted to climb on their own high horse to sort out the problem. And he said, in returning and rest shall you be saved. Isaiah 30 verse 15. In quietness and confidence shall be your strength. Quietness and confidence, that is a heart at rest. But no, you would not. You said, for we will flee upon horses. Therefore shall you flee, and we will ride upon the swift. Therefore they shall that pursue you shall be swift. You see, we cannot do it in our own strength or our own wisdom. So God is waiting, and then he says in verse 18, Therefore will the Lord wait, the Lord will wait, that he may be gracious unto you. And therefore he will be exalted, that he may have mercy on you. So this is in the mercy, in the rest of God that my situations are sorted out. And that is hard for us because we are so um, mind-orientated. The mind is the leading part of the soul. So we need to come to the place of returning to him and rest in that place. Everything is quiet so that we can hear his voice. And now another scripture, which to me is so beautiful, is Isaiah 66. What is the purpose of this whole thing? What is the purpose of this quiet heart? Listen to this. Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you will build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? Now we know in the new covenant, it's not a house built by hands. 
it is our hearts and he wants to be enthroned in our hearts. You see, rest means actually that I give him the lordship. That means I've got to get off my throne. I remember that so clearly when the Lord gave me that glorious encounter of surrendering to him. I realized that I was on the throne of my heart. I was ruling and reigning by myself. And the Lord said, surrender. And I knew, and I was a baby Christian, I knew now God, the Lord is Lord over my heart. He's Lord over my situations. And I said, Holy Spirit, I hand over everything that you can lead me and guide me. And my life was turned around 180 degrees. I was going that way on my high horse, in my strength. And as I gave it to him, the whole thing was turned around. He was Lord. See, his Lord of Lords. And when he becomes Lord over the throne of my heart, the Holy Spirit reigns over my soul and my body. So everything comes under the control of the Holy Spirit. And in that place, I have a heart of rest. It's the garden of the Lord that is being restored. So it talks about his garden in Song of Solomon, uh, chapter 4. And he says that blow, let the, the south wind and the north wind come and blow through my garden so that the fragrances can be released. So what am I releasing? Is it a fragrance or is it a stench? Complaining, murmuring, worrying, stress, all that stuff. And then what is so beautiful in chapter 5 of Song of Solomon, he says, he's come into his garden. And he's talking about the garden of our hearts, bearing the fruit of the Spirit. Well, let me read that to you. Oh, it is so beautiful. It is so beautiful. And that we realize he wants to... Um, have that communion with us. That's what it's about. It's all about communion, union in the heart. Because as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Now, I can't find Song of Solomon. There he is. Four. Um, five. Uh, I am coming into my garden, my sister, my spouse. This becomes a very intimate place. I've gathered my myrrh with my spice. The places where you have had suffering and where there were difficulties, you've given to the Lord. It becomes a, a fragrance and the oil of myrrh. I've eaten my honeycomb with my honey. I've drunk my wine with my milk. Eat, O oh friends, drink. Yes, drink abundantly, O oh beloved. You see, when this garden becomes that place of communion with the Lord, where my heart is at rest, he finds a resting place. He finds his habitation. That's what he says in Isaiah. 66. So now he wants to commune with me. He wants to give me counsel. He wants to teach me by the seven spirits. He wants to have that intimate walk with me through the garden. You know that beautiful song, a walk with in the garden with him. 
and he comes and he talks to me and he walks with me and he tells me I am his own. That is that belonging, that sharing of my life. And then I look at the wondrous works of God. And I walk through my garden, I see all the memorials of the miracles he has done when I trusted him. And I see his goodness and his faithfulness. And they're like trees in my garden. They're like flowering rose bushes. His love. And we can sit there and have that place of rest and refreshing. It says in Psalms 23, waters of rest, still waters is where he leads us to, where there is rest. Why would we not want that? But the easy and yet very difficult thing, if we rely on our own strength, is to surrender completely, totally. Acknowledge the fact that I cannot solve my own problems. This is in Matthew 11. It says, come and learn from me because I am meek and lowly of heart. So what is the opposite? Pride. See, if I want to carry my own burdens, it's actually, I'll do it by myself. It's pride. That's not going to work. He wants us to humble ourselves and come in full dependence on him. Lord, I cannot do anything in my own strength. I can do nothing without you. That's what Jesus says in John 15. Without you, I can do nothing. But when I abide in him, I have the fruit. You see, he says, abide in me and my joy I give unto you so that your joy can be full. These things I teach you so that you can receive that joy. Full fruitfulness, the fruit of the spirit where the gardener tends my garden. is the vine dresser, the father. And as I'm abiding in Christ and I'm just having my life in Christ, my heart is at rest. So I'm not busy putting my nose in other people's business. I'm so upset because so-and-so does this and that. What does that got to do with us? We need to Take our hands off, take our mind off and look up. And also the finger of criticism and judgment. Because it causes a hardness of heart. Now, he says, I will make a new covenant with you. I'll put a new heart in you, a heart of flesh. And I'll put my spirit in you. Give you a new spirit and I'll put my spirit in you. And I'll write my laws on the tablets of your heart. This law is love. So in that place of a heart at rest, I am so absorbed in his love that I'm completely secure. There's no fear in love. There's no fear in love. Perfect love drives out all fear. But I cannot come to know his love if I'm trying to sort out the stuff that I'm worried about and anxious about. He says, be anxious for nothing, but bring all your issues to him with prayer and supplication. Philippians 4 verse 6. And then we thank him for it, that he takes care of it. And what's the result? A heart and a mind and senses that are completely at rest, sound, healthy, whole. 
that's where you live in wholeness. Because he, when you come to the place of rest, it's a place where you have received that gift of his mercy and his grace to just rest in his rule, his reign, that he, trusting him, that he works everything out together for good for those who love him and who are called to his purpose. Well, what is this? What is it that we call to? We call to carry his image. So do we live Christ in a way where other people can see that our trust is in him? Somebody asked me a little while ago, have you always been so at peace? And I said, no. I wasn't at peace all of my life. I was not at peace when I tried to figure it out myself. But I came to peace when I surrendered to him. But you see, it bears witness of his almighty power. There is a God in heaven who is now enthroned in my heart and over my life. He is king over my life. His kingdom has come into my heart so, so easy, yet we struggle with it because the self has not relinquished itself. We have to carry the sign of the cross. This is part of it. You can't put a band-aid on fear and worry. I'll play some soft music and maybe I'll feel better. <laughs> Not solving the problem. We have to completely lose ourselves in his love. And it's available in that place of rest. So glorious. Let not your heart be troubled. And when you think of other people and you discern something which is out of line, pray. Don't discuss it with somebody. Pray. And trust God for that person. What do you want for yourself? I want peace. I have peace. So now, pray that peace and the ability to rest, to receive the rest of the Lord. So he's giving us all these things. I will give you rest. The condition is come to me, hand over to me. I will give you joy. I'll give you my joy. The condition is abide. I give you my peace, not as the world gives. Give I unto you. When your eyes are on him, not on the issues. I want to bless you with this glorious revelation that a heart of peace is your place of security in the fact that he's working behind the scenes on everything that I've given him. But he will wait to be gracious over us until we hand over. Return back to the Lord with your eyes on him, with your trust in him, with your surrender, your adoration in the finished work of Calvary. And you will come to that place of tabernacling with him, walking in that garden of communion 
union, getting his counsel, getting his insight, his wisdom. Everything is available. Everything is available in the place of rest. And from the place of rest, we are led by the Holy Spirit. We don't initiate things. It's not, it's, that is the stuff that will burn. It's building with hay and stubble. But when we are led by the Spirit, the things which he illuminates with his light, quickening it to our hearts, in that place we can be assured of everything is working out. So I live from the living word, the living bread. And I was sharing with a group, um, a mentoring group, and uh, all of a sudden I had this smell, overpowering smell of fresh baked bread. It was just like, I was thinking, but I don't have anything in the oven. And I, it came in waves, wave, one wave after the other. It would subside a bit and then the wave comes again, a fresh, fresh bread. And the Lord said, I am your bread. Come eat me. Come eat me. And he's breaking the bread of his precious mysteries to us in that secret place of rest. I pray, Father God, for everyone who will watch this video. Lord, that your grace will abound over them, that you give them the ability to let go, surrender, release, and come into the place of rest where you are Lord, where you are King, where your rule and your reign of righteousness reigns over our lives and where everything is under your hand of glory. I give you the praise, Father, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I believe in a change in your heart if you do this. So please write it in the comments. If God has touched your heart, let it be a witness that you give him the glory for doing it and giving you the grace to live it out every day. Watching your heart, guarding your heart more than anything that needs to be guarded. Because out of it springs the issues of life. And as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. If I think that God has got everything in his hand and is working it out for good, that is how it will be. I can trust him for miracles. He doesn't change. He is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And we give you all the glory, Lord. Amen and Shalom.